Yahweh promises to gather everyone he gathers. And I am a Hebrew. We are the Hebrews. And we're the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. I am a Hebrew. We are Hebrews. I was born in Texas. I am a Hebrew and I am from Florida. I'm a Hebrew and I was born in California. I am a Hebrew and I was born in San Diego, California. I'm a Hebrew. I was born in Indiana. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I am a Hebrew and I was born in Spain. I was Hebrew. I was born in 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 Hebrew. I am a Hebrew from West Africa, Liberia. I am a Hebrew, and I was born in a straight way. We are Hebrews. I will make this Shalom, greetings, bless you all. Sister Ashley here, all praises to the Most High Yah. I have asked Mother Jennifer to listen from afar and not join me tonight because I am, uh, I'm going to conversate with a sister right beside of me. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you for coming. Let everybody know who you are. Hallelujah. Um, you know, you got to speak up. You're not as loud as me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, my name is Sister Regine Mahim. 
Rajin Ahim. Yes, ma'am. Wow, hallelujah. <laughs> um, my sister is from, go ahead, um, born and raised. Let's oh, go that way. B- born in Haiti. Born in Haiti. Raised in New York. Raised in New York. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And now you moved from Brooklyn, New York to where? To um, Tennessee, Clarksville. Clarksville, Tennessee. And you live in a house with other saints. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Bless you, Nadia. Bless you for uh, being here in spirit, not being able to travel here tonight. Thank you to everyone listening. Bless you all the way in Africa. Bless you, Sister Sharon. Bless you, Diera. Everybody listening out there. Hallelujah. Yolanda, Aya, everybody. Thank you so much. All right. Me and Regine tonight. Me and you. You and me. Yes, ma'am. A sister that I'm uh, getting familiar with getting used to, conversating with when she comes, uh, getting to know you. And tonight I'm going to, um, I don't know, just pry into your, your life. Is that okay? <laughs> That's okay. Hallelujah. So you're here with us. How long are you here with us on the land? I was um, was honored to be here for a week. One week? One week. You and your husband? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Yes. We stayed at the, the guest house. It's been... <clears throat> It's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. Yes. All right. Sound checks on her voice. She's uh, softer than me. <coughs> there she goes again. <laughs> I have to scoot up. Uh, let us know if you hear us both. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. This is her first time speaking in front of the crowd. She likes to listen and not speak. Right? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. So um, just learning a little bit about you and your background, you were a caregiver. Can I say that? Is that what it is? Yes, what, what was your job title? Um, it was a nursing home um, activity leader. Um, yeah, it's like a caregiver too as well. Yes. And you loved it. I loved it. Um, loved caring for the elderly. Um, just, you know, playing, um, having activities with them, um, being there with them during the day, helping to go eat, shower, and yeah, I, I did enjoy it, caring for them, cleaning, sh- uh, helping them to shower, put their clothes on. So yeah, it was a joy. So you college college graduate? Yes, I have my LPN. I was gonna go for my RN, but I stopped going to school. Okay, yes. so LPN. Um, let's back it up. Let's go all the way back to uh, Haiti. What was life like? And I know you left at an early age, but yes. tell me something I don't know about you. Um, yes, I did come here at a very young age. I think Sister Esther was a little older than me, um, so I, I don't have much memory of Haiti. But Pause. You know, I don't know how many people listening might even know who Esther is. Who's Esther to you? <laughs> <laughs> who is Esther? Hello, Esther. Um, she's my biological, biological sister. sister. Yes. yes. <laughs> she's my older sister. Older sister. Yes. Praise you. <laughs> All right. So, Sister Esther Regis is your biological sister. Yes. All right. Let's go back. Let's go back to, to Haiti. Let's go back to childhood. Tell me something. Yes, ma'am. Um... I think it was very uh, vague. Um, I don't remember Haiti much, but being raised in Brooklyn, it was very different. Um, But I would say our parents kept the same traditions, uh, um, like like Haitian do. We still cook at home. We didn't really eat out much. We didn't go out much. Um, Still had a clean home. Um, Father went to work. He was a provider. Um, we went to school. School was very important. Education, you know, um, Haitian education is very important. They still kept that same tradition, I would say. Yeah. So how did you or your family uh, come to New York? I think my, my father was here first, and then he brought us here. He brought you here? Yeah. So maybe just employment, better maybe the chasing a dream. What was he What was he doing? Do you, do you even know why he moved to America? Uh, I don't really know concretely, but I know my grand my grandfather. He was in Florida, and he went to live with my grandfather. Then he moved to Brooklyn. Okay. So that's awesome. so you grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah. You traveled much, or you just you stayed there? I I I won't say much, but I did travel a little because I I I did like traveling. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here we are, 2022. Yes. I don't, I don't know how many months went by before I y'all can't see me and uh, Regine smile, but um, we were standing in the kitchen one day, and I got really close to you, yeah. like real close, just within inches, and you you just smiled <laughs> and laughed. And go ahead and tell everybody <laughs> this little inside joke from your perspective. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> um, I 
Yes. I think it was maybe I was getting familiar with the kitchen, and I'm usually not familiar with a lot of people in the kitchen. It's usually me in the kitchen. So you I'm, grew up, ma'am. Hold on. And then, wait, we we got so much to tell. I don't want to divert, but this story is so funny because so, so many people are in the kitchen. That means you're sharing the kitchen, you're sharing knives, you're sharing cutting boards, and here I am sharing your space. And because I could just tell that you just love it, I got really <laughs> – y'all can't see her laugh. I got really close to her shoulder, like shoulder to shoulder. And, and she just said, oh, Sister Ashley, right? <laughs> So we're coming from a background, right? Okay, Haiti to Brooklyn to to having your own I don't know, can I say will or your own life, your yes, own ma'am. right? Definitely, Everything. Yes. What was your mind like um pre marriage or even marriage where it was just you and your husband? Like how selfish can I say you were? Very I think I was very selfish. Um 'cause I think I was dealing, uh, I was, not I think, I know I was dealing with, now, now with the knowledge, I know that I was dealing with spirits, um, depression, um, low self-esteem, um, and <clears throat> very, uh, very, like, in, like, closed door, like, I didn't really open up to, to a lot of people. <clears throat> I had, Americans say introverted. Yes, that, that was really... That was the word. Yes. Yes. Um, didn't really come to stage more like I would be, I'll be, I'll say I'll be, quote unquote, the life of the party, but I, inside I was dying. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you and AJ got married and did you live in an apartment, you and him? Yeah. In Brooklyn. In yes. Brooklyn together. We moved, we moved to, to New Jersey. To New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And how did you find the saints? Was it Sister Esther or how, how did that come about? You going from... Like you said, dying inside, living in New Jersey, living in an apartment, city life, whatever, going through the robotic motions, right, to now finding uh, the straight way truth or the way. Oh, yes. Um, yes, um, it was through Sister Esther, uh, through her master, Brother, Brother Steve, um, that introduced Sister Esther to the faith. And at first, we were still at our father's home. We were um, trying to keep keep the, the Shabbat, um, the head covering, a skirt. Um, Sister Esther got married um, and left. She went to, they moved together in New Jersey. And it was really hard for me to keep it by myself because I was the only one in the home trying to still listen to Shreyway, still listen to the sister, sisters. Um, she was trying to um, have a connection. And I think because I wasn't strong enough um, mentally because my, my father and my stepmom would say, oh, you're just trying to be like Esther. Oh, Regina, that's not you. <laughs> you're just playing. That's not you. And I think I believed it. And so I stopped. Like you weren't really making changes, yes. right? Okay. Yes. It would be like one foot in, one foot out, because it would be like, okay, today I don't have to wear a head covering. Um, or I could have, I could have, you know, the, the pants when I want to. So it wasn't really, I was, I, I, I would say I didn't know y'all the way I know y'all now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, that that might um, come up later. I might ask more about that. Mm-hmm. But somehow, from Brooklyn to Clarksville, Tennessee, yes. how did that happen? Yes, it happened. We started fellowshipping with um, Brother Steve um, and Sister Esther in Long Island. Mm-hmm. Um, Back when they were still there before. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. They were still there. Um, and I think Brother Steve gave us the – he said, hey, I'm I'm moving. Um, if, if you guys want to, you guys could. It was it was nothing forced. It was nothing like you have to. It was he said, let it be y'all let you know, let it be for y'all because you're not moving. I'm not moving for Esther. I'm not moving for my nieces. I'm moving because I want to be closer to y'all's people and closer to y'all to have um a better life. So my master agreed to move, and that's how we got to Tennessee as well. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. when you moved to Tennessee, uh, did you go straight into a community house? First, we started with uh, two. Ooh, oh, I really um, We started with a, a family. That, yes. Um, that did not make it. That didn't make it. Mm-hmm. She, you guys can't see her face, but she chokes up because you build a relationship, right? Yeah. You, she built a relationship with uh, with people, a family that didn't make it, and lived uh, and shared common everything. You yeah. know, common life and family, everything you can imagine living in one home, and then they didn't make it. Yeah. And it hasn't been uh, even a year yet. Yep, so yeah, I can see how you would choke down tears. 
respectfully, a, a lot of us carry a lot of stories in our vessels. I say that all the time. Like, when I see the saints and they fill the tabernacle, it's a lot of tests and trials and stories inside of our vessels, some for honor, some for dishonor. And so then you living with this family and this family deciding to go uh, a different way that left you and AJ, what, alone? Your husband uh, alone in that house for a while? Or how did you transition to community house from there? Uh, yeah, provided. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> we, and, and then Brother Steve had um, suggested that we moved in with, uh, like, uh, single brothers, other other saints. Yes. And to see how that goes. And it, it went pretty well. So that's what happened. Because the, the lease was over in that home anyway. So we um, we didn't want to stay in that home anyway. So we moved in with other saints. And, yeah. So stepping stones, really. Yes, ma'am. And that happens to so many uh, individuals, you know, stepping stones from, well, let's say, one community to the next or one, one um, state to the next, just moving uh, inside the ministry to, to the right place. Mm-hmm. You know, some people live off land and then they're invited to a community. It happens. You know, yes. some people come to a community, they get married, they go to another one. So, uh, you know, it's always the face of the ministry is always changing. Um, all right, so now you're in a community home, yeah. and I know you're you're loving it, and yeah. maybe even your flesh is hating it, <laughs> okay. right? Okay, she said, okay, yes, <laughs> but it's what you aimed for even years ago, coming out of the city. So um, I got a clip for you. Okay, this clip was picked out by you. <laughs> Hallelujah! She was really inspired by Teacher Greg's. Um, Blog Talk recently, it was on the 1st of January, very, very recent on Blog Talk Radio. I don't believe it's been uh, uploaded yet onto our YouTube. It will. Um, Let's hear this clip. Let me see. Do I got it at the right spot? That's all right. I think I'm a minute early. All right. Let me turn up my volume. Don't give me sound checks. Let's hear what Teacher Greg has to say. I'm not going to hold everybody too long, but I'm definitely going to get into something that uh you know I think is going to be an inspiration for those who are who are inspiring to be on community and want to make that sacrifice and those who are still who are already on community that you know this would be a, this would be a reminder of you being a liability I mean not being a liability but more so being an asset so we're going to go over this and and what I named this early on was are you are you really ready are you sure you ready for community and the power of sacrifice because it is definitely a sacrifice. And I'm going to tell you something about this sacrifice. There is a power in it, okay? There is a power in sacrifice. The moment that you have converted over to this thing, you already sacrificed your life to make your life, the rest of your life, a sacrifice for the rest of your life to the king, to the king come. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're gonna, when, you, when you make the sacrifice to come here already, you might as well go ahead and expect to be sacrificed until the king comes. Period. You know what I mean? And I don't. I just know that a, a lot of folks will see the communal thing and they they see it from the outside looking in, but they don't really. And it looks good to them from the outside looking in, but they don't quite know yet, or they don't quite understand or comprehend what exactly goes into this. They don't understand what, what uh, comprehend what sacrifice or what they have to let go of or what they have to really truly divest themselves of to go this direction. This direction ain't a direction for the faint-hearted either. You know what I mean? Now, mind you, we don't want to sit here and steer our way and steer ourselves away from the simplicity in Christ Jesus. Not at all. But at the same time, you have to understand that this sacrifice is not only a worthy sacrifice and your riches will be in glory, but, man, it's a sacrifice that me, from experience, I can never see going back. I can never see, I can never see living another way. I can never see living any other way. I couldn't imagine me and my wife and my two sons leaving the community and going back to a damn raggedy apartment in the city by ourselves. I still got to go call about a living. And she's sitting here with powerless and, and without the strength of the house being there present. It's just her and her children. I can't even imagine doing that. I can't imagine her even trying to get back on the job. The day I took her off the job, you should have saw how excited she was because she realized she could be in her role. And this is a woman that told me herself, I can't wait to be on community. 
because I want my flesh tested. Yes, I do. So I can't imagine living no other way. And and for all you that are, that are on community, this is going to be a reminder of what kind of assets you need to be. You need to be straight-up assets, not liabilities, because it only takes one sinner to destroy much good. One. One. Not a bunch of you. It just takes one. The only way it becomes a bunch of you is when that one goes trying to sit there and spit in everybody else's ear and try to gain folks to their side. Hallelujah. Three minutes and a lot was said. Yes, Let's pick it apart. You, your husband, made the sacrifice to be here. You made the sacrifice as well as everyone else in your community house, right, because you're now um, with a, another family, different people. How many people are in that home? I think nine of us. Nine, okay. Nine. So um, praise you that you have that opportunity and that sacrifice. But what comes to mind? Yes, ma'am. Even um, with the word, you made the sacrifice. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, comes to mind, like, remember my testimony. Remember my testimony because um, we really here for y'all. You know, um, it, it, it is not for the fainted heart. I did watch a family that, was, that had so much zeal for the faith and... Um, didn't make it, and then you know you have a lot of questions like, were you really here for y'all, or were you just you just because it looked good, because you know it, it feel good, um, so that that came to mind like to be very sober, um, because you built a relationship with this family, yeah. living living with them and sacrificing together, coming out together, right? Did you come out at the same time as the family yes, that left? Yes. yes. We did. Yes, and you shared a home together. So you definitely made the sacrifice. They made the sacrifice yes. and then let their fire, um, you know, burn out, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's very attainable. Like, it's tangible the way that we live. You know, we you can do it, yes. and we are doing it. But what comes to mind um, when he said, when Teacher Greg said, uh, you want to be an asset and not a liability, What what's your thoughts? Oh, yes, I... <laughs> I, that was always um, my master's mindset, even and um, before before even coming to um, Tennessee. Um, I think he he, he was always um, I, don't, I don't know if you remember it, the last writing we had. He was always more um, sober than than me. I, I, I'm always questioning like, do I do I have it? What can I do? My goodness, I'm but he's very concrete, and he's like, yeah, and he's like you you could do this. You got this. We gonna we gonna do this. You gonna be alright and Easy to follow. It, it, that's like wow. Okay, so maybe maybe I I could do that. that could be a help. Um, if it's me cleaning the bathroom, listen, I will I will clean that bathroom. Yes, the best way that I can, and be a help and not be you know um li- liability. Yes, but be an asset because we 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 need each other. So you need me, I need you. You know, um, if you're just there, then you're just there. Right. Yeah. So from the outside looking into community prior to you living in a community home, which, by the way, how long have you been in the community house that you're in right now? How long? Uh, Maybe three months. Maybe three months. That's really good for the audience to hear because they can go, oh, okay, there are people, you know, you hear maybe me or Mother Jennifer and all our years in or, or, or all these things can fly through your mind, but you can go, no, there's the guy that's been here a few days and the guy that's been here three months and, you know, Yah is still growing this thing and moving this uh, ball is rolling forward. So you've been there three months. Let's go back to it. From the outside looking in with the mind that you had prior to living in a community home, was it attainable? Was it something that you thought you could talk her or do? No? no. She's shaking her head. No. <laughs> Not at all, huh? Why? No. What ran through your mind, being honest with yourself? Like, what voices did you hear? Mm. Like, uh, I think my sister Esther always said, community, well, everybody said, community show you your real you. And I think I was afraid to see, see the real me. Like, um, you know, how selfish I, I, I really am, how self-centered, how um, greedy I am, or even how just, uh, unhealthy I am, um, how I, I don't have it together like I think I do. And so you had even said today, you were like, you know, I really thought I was doing something, <laughs> right? And you were, right? You and your husband out there in your apartment in the city, you really thought you were doing something, right? But it's very, oh, gosh, what is it? It's gut-wrenching to yes, see yes. yourself? Is yes. that what it is? It's, it's very uh, sobering, too, to see, oh, wow, um, oh, no. 
I was I was here poo pooing on myself. Right. Um, the Yas people got this. Let me follow suit. Let me humble myself and learn how how to get it right because I I don't have it. I might thought I did. Um, I I always use the example with my master thinking. Um, he liked his egg a certain way, and then one day he's like, "No, ma'am, I don't like it that way." I was like, "Oh, all this time I was doing this. I thought I got it. I'm making his egg. He's eating it. And he's like, no, no, ma'am, I I don't like it this way. This is how I like it. So it's very sober and like, wow, okay, I you could always it's always always growing, always learning. Yes, room yeah. to grow, room never to change. Never arrived. Right, never arrived. So you were a broken woman, you believe? Yes. Yes, broken because of what? Just your I don't know, um, you had mentioned earlier your insecurities or, or the depressions and things, but um, the devil, of course, yes. right? Mm-hmm. But you were broken. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, um, if I could be real transparent, I used I used to be a cutter. Um, I used to, to sleep a lot, um, not knowing it was, you know, spirit, um, spirits that were ministering to me that, oh, you know good. You don't need to be here. Um, we could kill yourself right now. You know, not casting those spirits down um, and not really uh, letting <clears throat> letting Yah be Yah in my life. Thinking, um, like, to, at one point thinking, you know, he left me. Um, the Yah left you. He, he left yes. me. And nobody, like, I'm screaming and nobody was hearing me. That's what it felt yes. like. Yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah, wow. And so you feel the restoration happening inside you? You feel the healing? Oh, yeah. One painful memory at a time? Yes. Tell me about um, it. Getting deliverance. Yeah. Know, that, uh, I think my first deliverance, uh, you know, you, you always remember your first deliverance? Yes. <laughs> you should. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, my first deliverance was for the spirit of rebellion against my father. Um, and and that that experience was like, Wow, I've been wicked all this time because I, I always thought he was the problem. It's because you know he did this, he did that. That's why I'm like this. But it's really I was I was rebellious. I did not listen to him. I left the home, did not take his advice, and it was like, damn, I had to repent for that. I had to like get that out. That was that was not a spirit that I didn't want to be one with. And so really owning who you were and yes, the decisions that you made. Like, that oh. that comes with the faith. That comes with the package, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I was I was very ugly. I'm like, oh, that's how I look. Oh man, Eugene, that's not cute. Right. Yeah, that's right. very ugly. And <clears throat> getting those spirits out helped to bring a, a, a different peace. Yeah. Like, like think on these things, you know, um, joy, peace. Because at, at at a young age, I was not thinking of these things. I might I might have the appearance of it, but it truly, um, I was not thinking on these things. Getting those spirits out is actually what makes you an asset, right? Anyone who is getting those spirits out is an asset, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so you're learning oh, yes. these things firsthand. Oh, yes. Getting getting deliverance is, and changing your mind, like you said. Like, today I, I'll choose, I'll choose, yeah. Today I'll be a servant. Today I will choose salvation. And and don't be oblivious to, oh, I, I, I'm very wicked. I have a lot of spirits that I need to get out. Um, if I need to, if I if I want to have that closeness with Yah, I can't just come to Him. However, um, um, no, because because but my master he he don't make me. However, like he's like you gotta fix your attitude and come back. Don't don't come like this. So it, it's even more so with Yah. Like you can't be this ugly and you you want Him approach to, Him. Yeah, you would approach Him and blessing you. Bless bless what? Right. He need you to get it together first. And then maybe with his mercy, you know, um, uh, um, his blessings. It's nothing that I do, really. It's really all him that is changing my mind, um, helping me getting deliverance and having um, great sisters amongst myself. Um, Sister Toma, Sister Esther, just you know, if if they if they don't if they don't have the answers, they will guide me to someone else. I do have the answers. Hey, maybe you should talk to this sister. I say, hallelujah. And then really go to in de- the in-depth of why do I operate this way? Why do I think this way? Why do I act this way? Mm, that's not good. Regime. Mm-mm. That got to go. Or like, let's, let's do this. Let's do this and see how, how that how that um, affect, um you or your spirit, you know? So, yeah. Yes, beautiful. Um, it's a very painful process, right? Oh, yes. But it 
it's nothing like the pain of the darkness, the cutting, and the depression that was on you, though. You know, it's a different pain. It's a pain with a goal, right? Hallelujah. Okay, so um, anybody who's listening, that's possibly from the outside mind, and I say that not in a uh, derogatory way, but just, you know, simply from the lack of experiencing community or experience in the grind. Hey, chef, come here. Here comes our, our chef. She never knows when she's going to get called, right, Sakina? Sakina comes to the land how often now? Every day. Every day. And truly, maybe, let's say even six-day music practice. Yeah, so it is every day. Every day. Absolutely every day, seven days a week. And so, um, Sakina, what... And I don't mean to go into detail, but what do you see about yourself at, now that you're coming around the saints? What do you see about community, about yourself, et cetera, that you didn't see when you were on your own? Uh, the first thing you, I believe most people see is selfishness. You really don't realize how selfish you are because you are taking care of you, or just you, your husband, the dog, the cat. <laughs> or whatever is under his, you know, banner of his roof. That's really all you're taking care of. But it's like Shepherd Dan said last night on Lions Den. Hopefully uh, y'all can check that out. YouTube, Daniel Muir, uh, on YouTube, Facebook as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not scripted. But anyway, uh, like he said last night, the, the question he posed to Israel was, how often do you see yourself? When's the last time you saw yourself? And I was listening to him say that, and it touched me in a different place. It really hit home. It really was a spiritual question that he was asking, not necessarily physical, because in that question, when you're dealing with community, and the more I come on the land, the more I'm around the saints, the more you are able to see yourself. So I went from seeing myself once every time we come to the feast to now I see myself seven days a week. So it's not a it, – it's a true – purging process, it's a true pruning process, it's a process that people have already made this journey, this trek, and they can look at you and say, hey, look, you can do this, you can get this done, this is what you need to do, follow the man of y'all, listen, do this, do that, so as far as myself, I see myself every day, You and in seeing yourself, what you notice or what you see is somebody is doing something that gets on your nerves. Mm. That's the first thing that you'll notice, like, oh, my gosh, I can't stand when she leaves the milk out. I can't stand when she leaves the milk out. Guess what? You're looking at you, something that you do, maybe not in that area, but you are doing it somewhere else. She may leave the milk out, but you may leave the cabinet open. But you don't see yourself until you see yourself in someone else's likeness or body or, you know, position or place. You may hate how this sister talks to this sister. But you don't realize you talk to people the same way. You just don't know because you can't see yourself in that moment. But it's not until you see another sister do something you dislike in yourself that you be like, oh, that's me. Then you begin to have mercy. Then you begin to really, truly walk in love and walk in compassion and, and want for your sister what you want for yourself. That's when you really, truly begin to cultivate love in my opinion, is when you really start seeing yourself, which I see myself all the time. And Deacon Bell shows me a mirror every time I see him. So, <laughs> Seven days a week sounds like you're, yeah, you, can, you can literally I leave literally. the land and just be reflective of you, mm-hmm. right? Like what all you did, what you saw about mm-hmm. you, what you thought, like just trying to shed Speech, things that ain't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, man, I probably shouldn't have said that. Right. Next time, I'm not saying that. And you come back the next day, and you're put in that same situation. And you might say it again. You're gonna, right. Yeah, just to see if you're going to remember that, hey, I said I wasn't going to do this. So it's I, I, it's beautiful to me, you know. I, I don't know. It's it's painful. Because your mind's made up. It's yeah, that's it. Ain't nobody going to work. Yep. Ain't nothing else out there, bro. I just, right. just being honest, there's nothing else. Because I've done it all. So I can, I literally can put my feet up and say, ain't nothing else over there. There's nothing out there in this world. This, get this, you get the kingdom. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you. Very well said. Get this, get the kingdom. Hey, you ready for another clip? Yes, ma'am. Since you picked them, ma'am. Thanks for being with me tonight. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully, hopefully as they hear us, you know, they hear me and you who haven't known each other ever before. Before we were not a people, now we are a people, both willing to know each other 
me bumping you one day on a cutting board and knowing, just getting that feel that, oh, she doesn't like this. I'm going to stay right here, Regine. I'm going to stay right here. Look, you should see her face, y'all. And she just would smile. Like, I never really shared a cutting board like this or this close. Or I'm like, I'm going to make sure that I get in your space. This is going to be great. Um, and so we kind of built our, our bond after that. That's how it blossomed because I'm just going to make sure this woman conquers this. And I don't know if I've said it on the show, but Sister Jordan is the one that did it to me. Do you remember me sharing that story yes, with you? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sister Jordan would get in my space, and I didn't realize that I even had a MySpace. You I had no clue that I had a MySpace area because, actually, she didn't get on my nerves. She just showed me that love, love that I've never got. No, no one's ever gotten this close to me. Another woman has never touched me shoulder to shoulder and smiled and got, you know, four to five, six inches from my face, and you're not putting off some kind of spirit, you know. Chef done got back up and came to the mic again. <laughs> no, because you said Jordan. Come on, you got to say something. That's my boo. Uh, what, what you just said, it just jogged my memory, because we were just talking about this in the kitchen. You have, when you come on community so much. Hallelujah. <laughs> You literally learn those that labor among you. So when you said Jordan was in your space, it's crazy because we know Jordan is the love bug of the yes. land. Like, she yes. is affectionate. She loves on you. She yes. will come right up to you and be like, do you need some milk? And be no to no to you. Right. And it will disturb you because we're not used to that. So it's like it is an uncomfortable situation. But as you progress and you learn those that labor among you, by laboring among them, you will notice that is her personality, that is her nature. Just like Ashley is the uh, stirrer of the pot, as you just heard her. Like, she is the one that's going to stir up some spirits in you just Mm -hmm. so they can manifest, just so you can get set free. Like, we know, like, this is Ashley's, she's testing me. (laughs) She come in, chef, pick that paper up off the floor. She might have just dropped it. Mm -hmm. I know. She's testing me. Let me pick I'm this holding paper back up. my laughter. Let me pick this paper up. It's I hope all facts. I hope all facts. Oh, it sounds like the, the pinky toe and the neck and the nose and the ear and the body. Doesn't it sound like the body as we speak? I got to say, you know, with, with Sister Jordan, for example, what what when she got in my space years ago, I actually immediately noticed that I wasn't like her, meaning I haven't had that tenderness and that gentleness manifest in me ever towards someone else. That was my lesson. Like, she taught me a gentleness and a meekness that the world had hardened in me. And as a virgin woman, I believe that we should be gleaning those nuggets from those women, you know. And I've and I've had uh, virgin women in my life be... Um, Mentors, even if you want, can I say that because they're younger? They're just being a provoker of righteousness because I choose to observe their Christ-like nature and add it to my my tool bag. You know what I mean? And so she came in my space like like Chef said, love bug, and I can't even say like I, like I told you already. I had a sister growing up. You know, I've had um, athletic teams. We've all had our experiences with women. But I had never had one get close and me be noticeable, like, wow, like, women don't get close to women, you know. We don't share. That's not what we do, not in our culture, not in American culture. And so, really, the shedding of the that culture and getting close enough to share a cutting board, like me and you bumping up against each other, and you're like, okay, I can, I can do it. Okay, I see this one. <sighs> one breath at a time, Ashley, and we're just having that fun moment, right? Um, I admire that, appreciate that, because that is y'all's intention all along, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything to to say before the next clip? No, ma'am. Nothing? Just enjoying the show, right? Yes, ma'am. Her alarm went off at 6 o'clock on the dot, and she said, that's my sister-to-sister alarm. Hallelujah. So if she wasn't here, she'd be listening. Let's get back to Teacher Greg, January the 1st. Hallelujah. Blog Talk Radio. So, thanks. If you're inspiring to be on a community, okay, you have to really, truly abide in the ethics, okay, the body of moral principles or values governing or a distinctive or a distinctive of particular cultural group. 
a complex of moral precepts held or rules of conduct followed by an individual. We have to hold fast to our ethics. Okay? Now, a part of this, if you're going to come on community, okay, we have to understand, you have to understand something. When you go to community or when you when you inspire to come to community and you join community, okay, you're no longer your own. That's number one. You're no longer your own. We heard this from Shepard a long time ago. His life been over with. So is he the only one that has to have his life over with? Or should we follow suit the same direction? In community, you're no longer your own. You will, listen to this now, male or female, you will be told what to do. You will be directed. Yes, you will. Will you be told what to do? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, you will be directed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, do you have any problem with that? <laughs> no, ma'am. Not at all, right? You're going to follow suit, right? Yes, ma'am. Anything to say? <laughs> you uh you have to. And it's not it's not for it's not for the it's not for the sister or for the brother. It's it's for ya. You're doing it for ya. You're doing it for ya. We can never do it for each other without yeah. him, right? We're too selfish, you yeah. know. Yes. The the word this is this this was my meditation today. I'll share it with you all. I was really really reflecting on um in the end times, many things would transpire, and the word said that lovers of pleasure or lovers of themselves more than Yah, you'll find those words in there. And I was just really renouncing, repenting, shedding some of the the loving of pleasure, mm-hmm. right, which is your way. You know, it's very pleasing to get your way, mm-hmm. you know, really shedding uh, lovers of ourself and the things that we would rather do. And that right there... If you're aiming at a bullseye, it's going to hit all of us. That at one point we were very loving of the pleasure of this life, the things that it could give us, or we just demanded it even if we didn't get it, you know. We still demanded it. Um, and so I share that because, hey, I'm I'm also someone who is being directed. I'm also someone who is being told what to do. Mm-hmm. And in that, you're shedding your own will, and you're shedding your will so much so to the point that you can say, Hallelujah, yes, and amen to every form of instruction and have no feelings attached. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Whether it meets what you would want it to meet, meaning if you're told what to do and it's what you like, or you're told what to do and it's not what you like. But the, the end goal is to have that same mature response of yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I have no emotions, no spirit projecting off of you, no opposition, you know, just that that soundness, like that maturity, you know. That's when you shed your own pleasure and you shed your own will. That's the end goal. Yes. Hallelujah. Living this way. Let's go back to teacher. Teacher Greg. Yes, you will. You got to be willing to give of yourself in order to accomplish the mission, i.e., the vision. Okay, living communal takes sacrifice. It takes a, a lot of sacrifice, y'all. Hallelujah. It takes a lot of sacrifice. You have to get up and go to breakfast every morning. <laughs> you do. Yes, yes. yes. You, do, you do. have breakfast. You have you have a cook day. You have a breakfast day. A laundry day. Laundry day. Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. And that that sacrifice means that if I wanna, I wanna sleep in today. Can you do that? No, because not only do your words of, yes, yeah, I will follow you, bind you. Those words bind you. But you also have, if I can use the word pressure, (laughs) that the saints around you are knowing you, learning you, observing you, Mm -hmm. right, knowing those who labor amongst us. Um, I've been here, I mean, I'm always going to say, I'm going to guess it wrong. Y'all know me by now, 15, 16, 17, 20, whatever, right? I've been here 16 years or so. Should have wrote it down. That's really what I should have did and gave it to Chef. She would have kept that, but I still don't want to come out. Y'all be like, no way. Are you serious? No, I really just want to stay in my house and pray and stay with my family because it's easier, guys. Right? Regine's about to flip the table. 
<laughs> this, uh, hopefully it makes you feel better that, wow, she's been here 16 years and she still feels this way. Or maybe it makes you feel worse, like, damn, even 16 years <laughs> later I'm going to feel this way. No, you can overcome. Don't, don't, don't let it take 16 years. But, no, you get very accustomed to um, serving the saints and not yourself. So you don't really care that your flesh may feel like mm-hmm. you want to stay in. You know what I mean? That's not, it's not even a, a thought. It's like, this is what we're doing. And then you start training your children to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Now, do they want to get up every morning and go to the breakfast, you know, down the hall at 8 o'clock in the morning? Uh-uh. You know? As a matter of fact, two of them try to master sleeping and what they're going to wear the next day, school uniform and everything, just so they can wake up at the last minute, you know? And so the flesh is just always going to look for ways out. Always. Um, but just for a little humor, I just want to say that no matter what you're up against with yourself or your flesh, that you, you begin to master it by always going against it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it doesn't trouble you as much. It's like it exists, mm-hmm. but you can't deliver yourself from it. Mm-hmm. So you always push against it. You know, Paul said, who can deliver us from this body of sin and death? You know, and it's mm-hmm. true because it's just, it's there. Yes, right? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the clip. So in sacrifice, hallelujah, in sacrificing is to surrender. Y'all listen to this now. Community, sacrificing, sacrifice to surrender or give up or permit injury or disadvantage to for the sake of something else. I'm going to say that again. Your sacrifice is to surrender or to give up or permit injury or disadvantage to for the sake of something else, to dispose of, whether it's goods, property, etc., regardless of profit, regardless of such. So you can surrender all these things and bring disadvantage to yourself for the for a greater common good of everybody else. That means you are last. Community is first. You are last, Sister Regina, and community is first. You have a problem with that? No, ma'am. Not at all, right? You have to surrender yeah. something, right? Yeah. I surrender my uh, children. I surrender my husband and their will continually. They've been doing it since I've even been married, since I've had children, continually surrendering what they may need for someone else. I hope that can be all of our testimony. That is what it's about. Have you ever had to surrender um, what your husband wanted or what you even wanted for him or to do for him for the better of the community? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Yes. Yes, and it's like um, it's still going to get done. Yes. You're not neglecting him or community, but you are going, okay, I'm learning this balance, right? Yes. It, it, it's time management as well. Yes. I'll say. Absolutely. Balance, yes. Time management. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. All right, we got one more clip. You ready? Yes, ma'am. So as y'all can hear already tonight, I have a sister that has been living communally in a house with, you said, nine other people? So that makes 11 of y'all for three months. That makes the third house in Clarksville, Tennessee, right? Yes, ma'am. So you have the um, Steve Regis, Brother Steve Regis, and his, um, they would have came from New York. Was that Brooklyn area? Mm -hmm. No, not in Okay, Long Island, New York. They mass exited out, right? They live in a home in Clarksville, maybe just a few minutes from Brother Ron and Sister Toma, which is Brother Ron Walker. They have the second house in Clarksville, and they were just um, different saints that had been coming and listening for so many years and just started putting their, you know, money together, their minds together and living in a second home. So they're from different parts of the world. And then now the third house, which is all you guys. Yes, ma'am. And you guys, all 11 of y'all, are you from New York, each of you, or the East Coast? Mm, it's, it's nine together. Nine together. Um, I think New Jersey, New York, yes. New Jersey, New York. Some, some brothers. And the brother that's over your home, what's his name? Uh, It's Brother Franz and Sister Tracy. Franz and Sister Tracy. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Sister Tracy. Brother Franz. All right. Now, this clip is Teacher Greg going into a uh, story, I think, about uh, King David. Do you remember this one? All right. So you get your thoughts together after this. I'm going to ask you why you you picked this clip, okay? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Let me see. Is this, uh, yeah, this is it. Excuse me, y'all. We'll give you some examples, okay? Now, we're going to go over to 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 12, okay? And y'all listen closely. I, li- I love how this man surrendered, okay? Surrender. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 12. You there, co-host? 
Bless you for being here. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah the, unto David. And when Uriah, listen to this, and when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered, making conversation. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house, wash your feet, man. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So he gave him everything he needed to go to the house. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his master and went not down to his house. And this is the Hittite. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from your journey? Why then did you not go down unto your house? Look at this man's sacrifice, hallelujah. Listen to Uriah who was ready to surrender it all for a greater good. Verse 11, And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah, they, are, they abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my master, they are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house? to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife. <laughs> no, nah, man. As you live, king, and as your soul lives, I won't do this thing. And David said to Uriah, hmm, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. Uriah wasn't ready to sit there and leave the troop leave the ark, leave Israel. While they abide in tents, he was ready to surrender his 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 actual he was able he was actually directed to go home. He left that and was like, nah, King, I'm not gonna do that. Nah, I'm not doing that. Not at all. That's a really good clip. Why did you pick it? Um just like you said the the sacrifice, the surrendering. Um, wanting to be, you know, closer to Yah's people. Um, uh, although, like you said, the flesh, the flesh fight. Like it would be like, you know, I, I don't want other people to see me. I don't really want. Um, but we're gonna fight the flesh, I and mean, we're gonna, cause there's 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 a greater, greater cause. There's a greater reason why. You know, we are among the other people. There's, there's a mission. is is to make it to the kingdom. is to love one another. is to build with each other, um, help one another. Because when you're out there by yourself, you're not going, you don't, you won't go too far. Um, so um, I think because I, I do feel like we do need each other. Although you you have the choice. It's, it's, it's not forced. Um, it's not you have you have to be here. No, you don't have to be here. You you are here because you want to be here. You are here because you love Yah and you love Yah's people. Hallelujah. Well said. I'm gonna uh, read an email. Okay. Just came in hot off the press. 
Sister Aya had shared um, a little testimony on the Israel Heritage page on uh, Facebook, and it's timely with this show. So she had also emailed it to me, and it says, Shalom to all sisters, both those living in communities and those not living in community. I myself belong to the latter group. That means she does not live in community. She said, I have shared here photos of our sisters' Skype fellowship after Sabbath service. But this picture here is from previous gatherings. These pictures show our Mama V's blowing the shofar, hallelujah, as she did last time to give thanks unto Yahweh. This is about a little testimony, and I pray this is this encourages at least one soul. Hallelujah. After the last Sabbath meeting, a few sisters and I experienced something unique. When I first time heard Elder Rufus and Mother Jennifer speaking on how sisters were fellowshipping with each other after the Sabbath meeting, I got it in my heart that we sisters who live far away should do the same, and my master showed me the green light. On the last Sabbath, we got to experience something real. Mama V's asked if we could fellowship along with the Straightway North Carolina sisters, and of course, hallelujah, overall the experience was very humbling for me. These sisters, younger than I, truly are in the so-called grinding of the righteous. I'm dealing with my own wicked heart, with my master and his children, but these sisters, exclamation point. I've been in this ministry long, I have been in this ministry longer than many of them, but what could I really teach them? I know what it's like to be a submissive wife and a home educator for children, but not what it's like to be those in a community. We sisters asked questions, and the answers revealed how serious these young sisters in the faith are about working with themselves. We talked about the vertical relationship with Yah, how it manifests itself as a horizontal relationship with Him through the sisters. I was blessed to hear how their men have put them in order and saw these sisters have chosen to submit. And one of the most blessed moments was when my master's 13-year-old daughter had the opportunity to ask questions to daughters living in that community. Their answers were impressive. They mentioned words like order and protection and set-apart faith was in their speech. After fellowshipping, I was blessed to listen to Pastor Corey's Shabbat teaching, and yes, the spiritual realm is more important than anything. We will be judged of everything and what we've done in these bodies. All hypocrisy will be shown. Jesus. All this was underlined to us sisters by Teacher Greg's blog talk teaching. I don't believe it's coincidence I believe these sisters living in the communities have the opportunity to testify to themselves, to each other, and to us about the state of their hearts. And Yah, let me see the state of my own. We all witness all the time to the spiritual unseen world through our actions on how Yah sees our hearts. Jesus. I don't want to take advantage of Yah's mercy, but I know I would have no chance without it. I'm very thankful and will make my whole being show this in my actions. Thank you, Jesus. And she posted some beautiful pictures of their fellowship and they're literally from uh you know different countries mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. kenya mm-hmm. hallelujah um oh can say enough about community um there really is no other way right i mean you you've been there you've been out there there's no other way it's not like we're trying to push a community down the throats of those who don't live it so that you will feel some sort of way with the king because that's not it Right? It's just what's demanded of us. It's our experience and our life, right? Yes. And she just shakes her head in full agreement all night. Um, I got a clip I want to end the show with, but I want to hear your heart. Anything that you haven't said or shared or any thanks you want to give, just pour it out. Ma'am, um, I want to say all oh, glory to Yahweh. Um, I think I would not be here without him. I think sometimes, um, even even saying that I take it for granted, it's truly, yeah, that see me through because I was, I was really in a dark place. And having Brother AJ, um, my sister Esther, just um, pouring into me, helping me out, loving me in my mess, and showing me that, you know, I, I was, still am, uh, wicked and need a lot of work. So I appreciate the the mercy, the long um, long suffering, endurance with me because I know that it's not it's not easy to to deal with me uh, the spirits that I deal with because sometimes I'm oblivious to what spirits I'm dealing with. They be like, oh, you like this? I'm like, huh? I like that. 
It's the beams, right? Yeah. Oh, it's the beams so, in the eyes, man. Thank you, Yawa, for their their long suffering. Um and not taking any day for granted. Like I I very grateful to be alive cuz I did not see myself being even I seeing 20, 20 23 and now that I am 31 it's like wow, oh my yeah. Thank you for your mercy because I uh you you knew better than I did. So thank you for loving me in that way. Um thank you for a long suffering and endurance with me. Um I I'm grateful to be here. Um, I don't take nothing for granted. Um, I am striving, um, striving, uh, staying in the good fight. Um, I pray that I have a testimony that can help someone, uh, another sister, to also overcome, um, to also get their deliverance, walk in their deliverance. Um, that's that's pretty. Yeah, I really don't have much. It's very interesting to learn to love yourself in a denying of yourself process. That's intricate, right? Yes, ma'am. We're learning to love ourselves while we're continually denying ourselves. Yes, Only Yah can bring great peace in that dynamic because yes. in the world we tore ourselves down and denied ourselves that way, right? Let's end on this clip. Bless y'all. Thanks for tuning in tonight. All praises to the Most High Yah. He's the reason we live, move, and breathe. Thank you to everyone who loves him, everyone committed to prayer, everyone lifting up the righteous and those that are dropped in your spirit, dropped in your heart to pray for. Please don't forget Deacon Bell's household. Bless y'all. Even in the pain, never let the enemy or anybody make you feel bad for being holy, for being righteous. And understand something. You are the best. Don't apologize for being righteous. Don't feel bad for being set apart. Embrace it. Give thanks. Never let nobody make you feel bad because you dress modest, because you cover your head, because you walk around and you just being perfected and you walk around pure. A chase bird. Every spot and blemish being cleaned up off you. Don't let nobody come around. Don't let no daggone demon. Don't nobody feel up with no demons come around here and try to convince you otherwise. You are the call of Yah. You are the remnant. You are the light amongst the Gentiles. That's who you are. We are Israel. That's who we are. We are the best. We are the remnant. We are the set apart for the king of pride of the Messiah. Chase first, that's who we are. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Sit up there we come this morning. Because especially the sisters, I'm telling you, Satan come whisper in their ear. Satan come try to whisper in their ear. Make them feel like they ain't worth Make them feel like they this. Make them, make them feel like they ain't said, no, 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 no. Guess what, sisters? We need you. Come on. We need you. Come on. My wives, I need them. Can't do this by ourselves. Come on. Why do you think he said the two would become one flesh? That's it. That's it. One mission, one heart, man. That's it. That's what this thing is about. Don't let nobody come tell you otherwise. 